Welcome to dual enrollment for fall 2020. We're so excited to welcome you to your first semester as a dual enrollment student. And to any continuing or returning students, we welcome you back. My name is Kristen Corkill, and I'm the Director of High School Initiatives with GPTC. I have the distinct pleasure of working with our students and school partners throughout DeKalb, Newton, and Rockdale counties. This information session is designed to give you the important tools you need to get started on your semester in the dual enrollment program. There are also more detailed presentations on some of the topics we'll be discussing in this video on the main orientation webpage. Make sure you take some time and review those presentations after this one. Take notes as you go, and if you get to the end of these presentations and anything remains unclear, please reach out to the dual enrollment office. We may not be in our GPTC offices right now, but we are working to support you as you begin this journey. Before we go any further, I want to make sure you're aware of some recent changes to the laws governing dual enrollment in Georgia. Many of you began this application and enrollment process months ago, before legislation was finalized. Very briefly, here are some of the important changes to dual enrollment and funding eligibility. Dual enrollment funding will be capped at 30 funded hours. Students who are in 11th and 12th grade can take academic classes like English, math, science, etc., and CTAE courses that align with a pathway, like computers or business or welding. 10th grade students are eligible for CTAE courses only. Funding is only for approved courses. The Georgia Futures course directory lists the courses that are eligible to receive funding, so it's important that you review that prior to registering for classes. After the funding has been used for 30 hours, students may be eligible to receive HOPE grant funds to continue in dual enrollment. Also a rule change is that students are no longer able to repeat courses due to not passing or withdrawing from classes. Students who withdraw from two classes during their entire time in the dual enrollment program will no longer be eligible to receive funding. These rule changes apply to all colleges attended, not just classes you're taking with GPTC. All of these rule changes are for receiving dual enrollment funding. Students do have the option of paying for classes themselves. If you pay for a class yourself, it is up to the high school to determine if the class will count on your high school transcript. Before registering, please make sure you have communicated your class request with your high school counselor. I also encourage you to review the George Futures website to see more detailed information on the dual enrollment funding eligibility, to view your Georgia Futures status, and search the approved course directory. Now, let's get started on your dual enrollment experience. The dual enrollment staff is here to support you. I have already introduced myself, and there are three other team members who will be working with you as you continue on in the program. While we are all here to assist you, you do have an assigned staff member based on your high school. If you attend a DeKalb charter school, private school, or a homeschool student, or if you are a DeKalb County School District student, Mrs. Thomas is your assigned coordinator. If you are a DeKalb County School student or a Decatur High School student, Mr. Igbonaguam is your assigned coordinator. And if you live in Newton or Rockdale counties, Mrs. Mullinax is your assigned coordinator. Your coordinator will be assisting you as you navigate through the dual enrollment program, registering you for classes each semester, and communicating with your school counselors about your progress. If you ever have a question or a concern while in the dual enrollment program, your, your coordinator would be the person you reach out to. They will either assist you or point you to the right person or department who can. So just a little bit about GPTC and some of the benefits of enrolling through the dual enrollment program. GPTC is an open access institution, meaning that everyone is accepted. Depending on your placement scores, that will determine what classes you're eligible to take. We offer classes online, now and during a normal semester, as well as classes in Clarkston, South DeKalb, and Newton County. We also have a presence in the high schools during the school year at Decatur High School, Rockdale, Rockdale Career Academy, and Newton College and Career Academy, just to name a few. GPTC is a technical college, so we have a number of programs that offer hands-on training to prepare you for an exciting career. 
We also have an articulation with the university system of Georgia, guaranteeing 28 core classes that will transfer into the university system. GPTC also has a number of other articulation agreements within and out of state colleges and universities. If you have any questions, make sure you talk to your coordinator about your classes and their transferability. When you applied to GPTC, one of the questions in the application was what program of study you were going to pursue. Many of you probably selected the Interdisciplinary Studies AAS degree to take general education classes. You may also have an interest in a particular subject area, like criminal justice or nursing, and chose a specialty regarding that. Whatever your pathway is, there are different levels of coursework that are offered. A TCC is specialized curriculum. Some TCCs are as short as one semester that prepare you for a career. Diplomas are similar to a TCC in that there are specialized programs in specific career fields but can take up to two years to complete. An associate's degree is a program that can transfer into a four-year college or university or prepare you for a career. Whatever your program of study is will guide what classes you take while enrolled. If you signed up to do a computer programming degree, you're not going to be enrolling in a welding class. Just like if you signed up to be an automotive program, it would not make sense for you to take a cosmetology class. Your programs of study help keep you on track towards your credential and your high school graduation progress. Now, let's get ready for classes. In order to register for classes, you must have a Georgia Futures funding application on file or have communicated with your dual enrollment coordinator that you plan on paying for classes yourself. It is important that you register for classes with your dual enrollment coordinator every semester and for all schedule changes. This is how we can better ensure you're taking approved classes and are on track to complete your degree. You're able to view the class schedule in Banner Web to see what classes are available to you, but please make sure you're turning in your schedule request to your dual enrollment coordinators. At GPTC, academics and technology go hand in hand. Every student who has been accepted and registered for classes has a GPTC account that has been assigned to you. This is information that came via email with your acceptance to the college or may have come in a postcard in the mail. GPTC uses a single sign-on where one username and password grants you access to all of your accounts. It is important that you are logging into your GPTC email and other accounts regularly. A little bit about each of the programs that GPTC uses. Your official student records are located in Banner Web. This is where you're able to see your course schedule, view your final grades at the end of term, access your personal information, and other resources available to you. During the semester, all classes utilize Blackboard for accessing homework, assignments, and any e-learning or textbooks built into the class. Navigate is a student portal to communicate with your advisors and other staff members, map out your credentials, and see your student information. I encourage you to spend some time setting up these accounts and making sure they're active before the semester begins. On the main orientation webpage, there is an in-depth tutorial on setting up your accounts and walking through the different platforms, especially Blackboard. I encourage you to review that video as you will use your GPTC accounts extensively throughout your time in the dual enrollment program. Beginning fall 2020, Many GPTC courses will have textbooks built into the class through Blackboard. This is called OER, or Open Educational Resources. When you access your class in Blackboard, you will see instructions about how to access the book. If you're taking a class that requires a physical textbook, that information will also be posted in your course information in Blackboard or the class syllabus. Dual enrollment students who do require a physical textbook receive that from the GPTC bookstore. You will submit an email request to the bookstore and they will send you instructions on how to retrieve your books. 
If you do receive a physical book that is rented to you for the duration of the semester, you'd have to return it at the end of term and in good condition. If you do not, you will have a financial hold on your record. If you have any confusion about what your materials are, please review the course information in Blackboard and the class syllabus. Also, please be advised, you may be in a class that requires you to purchase materials that are not part of dual enrollment funding, like uniforms or special equipment such as cosmetology kits. If you have any questions about your classes, please contact the dual enrollment office. Make sure you're keeping track of important dates and deadlines for GPTC. Remember, GPTC has a calendar that may be different from your high school. Semester breaks, holidays, and teacher and service days may be different. Even if your high school is closed, you may still have a GPTC class meeting. So please make sure you're keeping track of the GPTC academic calendar. Fall semester classes start on August 17th, and that's the first day that you're able to log into Blackboard and begin participating in your course. August 19th is the last day to make any schedule changes. After the 19th, the schedule is locked. You also have to complete what's called a no-show assignment in the first week of the semester, where you will be dropped for non-participation. August 21st is the payment deadline. If you're taking a class as a self-paced student, or if you're taking a class that has a lab fee that is not covered by dual enrollment funding, you do need to make a payment by August 21st. All important class due dates for assignments, tests, and exams will be located in your course syllabus. So make sure you're keeping track of all dates and deadlines posted by your instructors, as well as the GPTC academic calendar. Every semester, we will review your academic progress. To be in good standing, you have to maintain at least a 2.0 GPA and successfully complete 67% of your class attempts, meaning you're passing your classes with a C or better and not failing or withdrawing. If you do fall below good academic standing, you will have one semester to raise your GPA or improve your progress. If at the end of that semester you have not done that, you will be suspended from classes. Remember, there has been a change to dual enrollment where students cannot repeat classes and receive funding, and you cannot withdraw from two or more classes, or you will be considered ineligible to receive additional funding. Also, that's important to know, 30 credits that you receive funding are for all of your attempts, not just classes that you pass. So it's very important that you do well in every class. These are part of your college transcript and can negatively impact you down the road even after you graduate from high school. So please make sure you're maintaining a good grade point average and successfully completing your class attempts. Now a little bit of information about some campus services available to you. As a dual enrollment student, you have access to all of the student services and activities that any other GPTC student does. Your GPTC accounts are how the college will communicate with you and how you will access your coursework throughout the year. Right now, with classes being fully remote, it is even more important that you maintain access to these accounts. If at any point you have technology issues, make sure you report them right away to tech support. More detailed information about this is also discussed in the technology orientation video on the main orientation webpage. At the college level, students who receive accommodations inside or out of the classroom must self-identify with special services. Your IEP or 504 plan or any other arrangement you may have in place with your high school does not automatically transfer to the college. If you do not register with the special services offices, your accommodations will not be in place. Please be advised Services begin once all documentation is submitted and complete, and services are not retroactive, meaning if you opt not to register with special services at the beginning of term, but decide later to turn in paperwork, you cannot go back to the assignments that you may have already happened to do any kind of makeup work. 
If you're a student with an IEP or 504 plan, please make note of Ms. Greenwood's contact information. She also has a video on the main orientation webpage that goes into more detail about the process to register with special services to establish accommodations. Even though the buildings are not open, library services and librarians are available to you as you begin your coursework. As a student at GPTC, you have access to databases and books throughout the state to assist with research and writing assignments for your courses. The library also has a library loan program for students to check out laptops for short-term ba basis. I encourage you to watch the library services video on the main orientation webpage for more details on how to access the library and utilize the service and expertise of our librarians. What we've talked about today and much more is written in the student handbook and the college catalog. These two items are found on the college website and are important tools as you navigate through GPTC. Please take some time and review these documents. Consider them to be your contact between the college and the student, and they outline your rights and responsibilities. Also, even though you're still enrolled in high school, you are considered college students. There is a law called FERPA that quite simply puts restrictions on what information we can share with anyone other than the student or educational partners, regardless of your age. This means if a parent or guardian calls and asks us what your grades are or wants a copy of your schedule, we cannot share that information. There is a FERPA waiver that is on the GPTC website that students can complete that gives access to the student record. So students, if you want your parent or guardian to be able to call up and ask questions or advocate on your behalf, please make sure you fill out that FERPA form. This has been a lot of information. I hope that you feel better prepared to start this semester. I do encourage you to review the main orientation webpage to see some of those other videos and presentations that we spoke about. I also encourage you to review the Georgia Futures website and go into more detail about the changes to dual enrollment, eligibility, and funding. The more you know, the better prepared you are. If you still have questions, please reach out to the dual enrollment office at dualenrollment at gptc.edu. That's the quickest way to have your questions answered or to arrange a time for a phone call or video appointment to meet with a dual enrollment coordinator for a more in-depth advisement appointment. I thank you for your time here today. We're so glad that you're joining the dual enrollment program at GPTC, and I wish you the most wonderful semester.